Evan, CGs, we are back again. Ha, yeah, it seems like we're gonna be back every day, eh? every month, eh? every year. Eh? We have to, we have to, we just have to be with each other until this math thing becomes easy. But anyway, without wasting any of your data and any more of your time and energy, I would like us to do this type of question, right? You guys voted on the polls and you said proving that something is a slightly quad is quite a bit of a, a, a challenging concept right so i was like nah man it's not if you get the concept you'll see it's not so let's see on this question on on your screen you can see that we have a b e d right which are on your circumference and we have center o and we have c which is a point of intersection of b e and a d and then we have O1 and O2 inside, E1 and E2, D1 and D2, and C1, 2, 3, 4 inside there, right? And it's also shown that we have AE is parallel to BD. I'm, I'm going to use this as an example for you to understand the concept behind proving if something is a cyclic quad. But as you can see, I wrote concept because we are the concept getters. It's all about getting the concept, CGs, concept getter, CG, you know. I want to first explain the concept behind these types of questions, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here first. Before we answer this question, I want to go in here so that if the question can come in any way, you will be able to attack it. So let's attack. Um, there are three properties of cyclic quadrilaterals. These are the first thing that you have to consider. There are three properties of quadrilaterals. The first one is angles in the same segment right what does that mean if you have a circle right and you have something of this kind right the only way this angle can be equal to this is if this if these two vertices on the circumference are on the circumference because this arc here will subtend and then this arc will subtend meaning for two angles at the circumference to be equal the other two vertices should also be in, on the circumference meaning we're going to have four vertices on the circumference making a b c d a slightly quad if we were to connect them and make it a slightly quad so that's the first thing angles in the same segment if this is a, is a property of a cyclic quad, it means in order to prove that A, B, C, D is a cyclic quad, you can just prove that angle A is equal to angle B. Makes sense. That's the first thing you can concede. What is the second property that you can also consider? The second property can be opposite angles in cyclic quad. The obvious one, cyclic quad. Which one is that? Let's see. If I have a circle, ah, this one is obvious, guys. If I have a circle and I draw this, remember, a slightly quad is a quadrilateral whose vertices are at the circumference, right? If the vertices are on the circumference, for it for us to conclude that this is a slightly quad, we have to know that A, B, C, D. We have to know that angle A plus angle C when we add them, they give us 180 degrees. Opposite angles. If they oppose each other, right? If they are opposite to each other in a slightly quad, when you add them, they give you 180. We say they are supplementary. Right? Let's move and go to another one. In the third property. The, th the third property is what? Is an exterior angle of cyclic quad of cyclic quad right this is a c i'm sorry for my handwriting i have a story i'll tell it one day about my handwriting but don't feel sorry for me so best uh, the exterior angle of a cyclic quad which one is this one if you have a circle again and then i draw a cyclic quad i draw a cyclic quad and I extend one side, let's say this side was like this, and I extend it, then I will have an exterior angle. The only time an exterior angle exists 
is if a side was extended. Does that make sense? So if I draw a tangent like this, because this line, this line here, is not an extension of this side or this side, which means this angle is not an exterior angle. Do I make sense? But the exterior angle will only exist if I extend a side, then I will have an exterior angle. And what do we have? What, what do we say about an exterior angle? An exterior angle of a cyclic quad will be equal to the interior opposite angle. Do that make sense? So you go inside, right? And then you go to the opposite. So this angle here, right, will be equal to this angle here. So that's another property of cyclic quad. If you can prove that there's an exterior angle of a cyclic quad, an exterior one is equal to the interior opposite, then you have proven that A, B, C, D is a cyclic quadrilateral. So all you need in any rider that you are given, all you need is to prove these three properties. This, this, or this. One of them. So now we go back. This is just a concept, right? So I'm going to check my rider. Then I will check which property is easy to be proven. Right? So let's see. We go back. We go like, oh, we go back. We go back. We go back. And as we go back, we go back. We go back. And you'll be like, okay, we are back, right? Then I'm going to be like, okay, on this diagram that we have here, which one of the properties can we prove? Then I'll be like, they want us to prove O, C, E, D. Let me look at O, o here, C is here, D is here, and E is here. When I'm looking at this, I will see that if I try to draw something, I'll see that this and this and this and this and this and this can give me what? Either I'll have to prove that this equals to this, one of the properties which are angles in the same segment, or I'll have to prove that this equals to this. But I can see that this one here, ah, these two are not easy to prove. I mean, how am I going to get E2 and D1? Ah, yeah, 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 Hi, Mr. Say, why should I? Maybe the one that is going to be easy to prove is what is this one and this one here, O2 and C3. If I can prove that O2 is equal to C3, then I've proven that OCED is a cyclic quad. That's how you solve this question. If I were you, I would just pause right now and say, can I prove and try to prove it? And when you are done, you continue and play and see how I'm going to do it, right? Maybe we can, we, we're going to do it the same way, even if we don't do it the same way, as long as you manage to. You passed. Okay. So let's see now. Let's prove it. The, the first thing that I'm going to do is how do I prove that O2 equals to C3? By finding anything that is equals to O2. And then whatever that is equals to O2, I'll find what is equal to it and what is equal to it. And then I'll see whatever that I found that I find somewhere there in the front there, somewhere, somewhere, somewhere there. I'll make sure that I relate whatever I find somewhere there with c3 and if they can be related uh then i'll be able to prove that c3 is equals to o2 so that's how you prove do that make sense so let's see now if you didn't understand just see it happening so i'm gonna say okay proof right i'll just go and say proof okay then i'm gonna start oh o2 o2 equals to what i start with o2 o2 equals to what o2 is equals to 2A, right? I'll say 2 angle A. My reason will be what? My reason will be angle at center equals to 2 times angle at circum, circumference. Circumference, right? Then I'll be like, okay, I got my reason. Now I'll be like, now that I got that O2 equals to 2A, what is equals to A? Then I'll look at this. Now I'll be like, this, again, this, subtends, as much as it subtends O2, it also subtends A. But again, it subtends B, which means my A is equal to B. So I'll be like, ah, now let's see now. Angle A is equal to angle B. And what's the reason? Angles 
in the same segment. Ah, oh, man. We got it. Now we got to go. Oh, I got this. But there is no way in a question that will give you parallel lines for nothing. There's no way. You see this? And this? There's no way, man. For nothing? Nah, nah, nah. There's no way. So now the question is, how do I use parallel lines? It takes me back to math. It's fun. Ah, oh, man. Fun, man. Fun, man. So I'll be like, oh, if I can recognize the N, the N, which is alternating angles, then I'll be all right. So let's see. This is Zupu, Zupu, Zupu. Uh, Zupu, Zupu, A and D2. Ah, man. This is easy, right? So let's see. Which means I can conclude and say A is equal to D2, right? And what is my reason? Alternating angles. D2 is this one. So I got it. Makes sense. But remember, I said for me to prove that OCED is a cyclic quad, I need C3 and O2. And I've been finding everything equal to A, B, blah, blah, blah. How does my C3 fit into this? So let me see now. Let me connect. Let me connect. I'll look at this triangle C, B, D. I'll look at it and I will realize that C, B is extended. Which means I have an exterior angle. Which means my C3 is an exterior angle of a triangle. Therefore, it means B and D2. When you add them, they will give you C3. Ah, ay, man. Ay, man. This is too easy. Tell me this is not easy. So, we're going to say what? We're going to say angle C3 is equal to angle B plus angle D2. And my reason is exterior angle of triangle now how am i gonna use my b and my d2 remember we said here on this step a is equals to b and again a is equals to d2 which means if i add b and d2 i'm it's this is the same as adding a and a which is gonna give me 2a so that means c3 equals to it's equals to what 2a so I can conclude and say that. I'll just be like, oh, that means C3 is equal to 2A. Right? That is just basic algebra. I just substituted. And if I could prove that C3 is equal to 2A, and I know with my first step here, I know that my O2, my O2 is equal to 2A. Come on. Come on. That means C3 is equal to O2. Then I'll just be like, oh, therefore, O2 is equal to c3 and that's exactly what we wanted to do guys c3 go to the diagram c3 equals to o2 we proved it and if those two are equal that means o c d e is a slightly quad why because angles in the same segment so you'll just say therefore you conclude with what they asked go at the top there you're going to say, therefore, O-C-E-D is a cyclic, cyclic quad. And your reason will be angles in the same segment. Guys, the magic trick in proving this type of question is the last reason. Do you see this last step? The last reason will always be a property of a cyclic quad. So, that's why you have to first know which property am I going to use amongst the three that I mentioned in this concept. And if I'm going to use that property that I choose, it's, it, it will have to be my last reason when I conclude that the diagram is indeed a cyclic quad. Guys, come on. Don't tell me this is still difficult. Come on. Anyway, don't forget. Don't forget what? Don't forget to do this just this guys just this just this and make sure that others are also passing how